I've had some success with these Orico MTOD 2. I've got one in the system that I'm using right now. It's actually this one. And now they've got a new one here and they're advertising this is industry grade. This is the Orico IG740 Pro. And I've got the two terabyte variety. It comes in a few different flavors and a few different sizes. Now they're calling this one industry grade, but it's the same exact NAND flash memory. This is TLC NAND flash memory. I always use OEM keys. I grab them over at whokeys.com. This is the price you're gonna pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home, and we have a couple different flavors of LTSC. 2021 gets updates until 2027, and the 2021 IoT edition gets updates until 2032. Also, if you're sick of paying that monthly fee for Office, you can get an offline version of Office. They've got 2019 and 2016. You know, 2016 will get most people by, in my opinion. You can also use the coupon code TS25 on these to save 25% on this as well. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the user center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. If you're not familiar with all this stuff, you got triple level, quad level is the new stuff that's not quite as fast, but you can fit more of it on here for a cheaper price. Triple level is um, a little bit more expensive, a little bit faster. And what it means is you have three bits of data per cell that's on here. Now the industry grade stuff, I'm holding the wrong one. The industry grade stuff is generally single level cell, but those are way more expensive because you only have, uh, you know, one bit of data per cell. So they're fast, they're expensive, um, and you know, they last a lot longer. This one's in the middle, it's triple level cell, uh, and it's using the Yangtze memory, which is probably the premier, uh, I guess, manufacturer of M.2 memory in China right now. You know, I've had good luck with it and there's a lot of reviews online, but there's not as much information in English uh, as there is if you go and like translate some Chinese websites and stuff. You know, while this is using TLC memory, which I would consider to be like high-end memory for a desktop user, or even possibly you could use this for a server as long as you're doing more reads than writes. But I'm not sure if I would consider it the same as SLC. So what are they doing to give it that industry grade, you know, stamp of approval? Well, there's a couple different things. This one doesn't have any RAM on board. And a lot of these, you know, memory modules will have a little bit of RAM on board. This one doesn't. And that does a couple different things. It means it's going to share system memory. So as long as you've got a decent bit of fast system memory, that's not too big of a deal. But there is actually a benefit to doing it this way. It lowers the price a little bit. And it also allows this to operate at a higher temperature without throttling because a lot of times the memory, the memory controller, all that kind of stuff, that can't run at the same high temperatures as the NAND flash memory that's on here. So that's an interesting choice when you look at it from that standpoint. They're saying up to 7,400 megabytes a second, which I will test. The next thing that they're doing is a bit of software. So they do have some error correction software on here to make sure that you don't get any weird bit flips and any of that nonsense. That's something that goes a bit beyond just a regular consumer-based drive. You're making sure that your, your data is intact while it's on here. The third thing that they're doing is they're simulating SLC on here. And this is very interesting because you've got a portion of the M.2 that's set aside to only have one bit of data per cell. And this allows you to have a nice pool of cash. So when you're using the drive, it's going to feel faster than it really is. It's like free performance, man, but it's not free in the same way that the AI free that NVIDIA is doing is like fake frame. You're actually getting real performance. Now, once that cash buffer fills up and everything, maybe your performance will be degraded. I was not able to test that. All the tests I did are showing the maximum performance, also taking into account the SLC cache. And that is because I don't have anything fast enough to test this with. And the only, I mean, maybe it would be okay to test it with this, but my, my <laughs> other computer only has one PCI Express. There's a bottleneck here and it's not this, it's the other stuff. So in theory, if you had two of these in a system and you were transferring one to the other, once the cache filled up, it would slow down to a more reasonable rate. But we have to think about what is reasonable when 7400 is the max and it was running at 7400 throughout all the tests. So it's what I'm trying to say is that it's fast and it has a lot of industry grade features. Now it's not going to allow you to write a gazillion times like an, you know, industrial drive would or an SLC based drive would, 
but for most home users the bottom line is you're going to get something that's a lot faster and can run hotter without getting into some trouble. The MTBF on this, that's you know how, how long you can leave it running, is 1.5 million hours. So start your clocks and just after you get one of these and see how long it runs. Now that I've told you all of that, let's take a look at the price. 139 for two terabytes. That's a really good price in my opinion. Plus right now there's a 20% off coupon. <laughs> I don't actually use Amazon all that much, but yeah, you also have a 20% off coupon. And if you don't get the coupon this way, the coupon is IG740PRO25. I'll put that information in the description as well as a link to this. So I think this is a good deal and they did not sponsor me. One terabyte, 66, I think the good deal, the best deal right here, just get the two terabyte. All right, now let's do some benchmarks and we'll check out the heat. I need to initialize my drive. So I can see it over here on Crystal Disk Info. You can see right here, it's NVMe Express 2.0, fancy. PCIe 4 by 4 and I've got another Oracle drive in there. It's a Gen 3 by 4. That's in you know, my C slot. Just set it up with a GPT. Defaults will be fine. Right click on it after you've done that. Click on new simple volume. Next, next. Assign a letter. Yeah, sure, G's fine, whatever. All right, so it's fast. Like it's really fast. Look at that read, 7417. And the right, 6467. The 4Ks look good as well, but it's hot. 86 degrees is really hot. Let's take a look at the IOPS. It's gonna make your head bleed. Yep, 230 something, 208. Yeah, it's a lot of IOPS going through here. So, I mean, most of your computing honestly is done like this, but you, you know, if you ever need to do any like big file transfers and stuff, it's gonna get hot. Well, good grief. Again, really fast. Let's uh, put these all side by side. Can we do that? So interesting, the write speeds over here on Crystal Dismark were substantially faster here at 74. Uh, the fastest write that we have over here is not even six, 5.93. So our fastest read speed over here is a little faster though. So 6.9 gigabits per second or gigabytes per second, I'm sorry. Let's just do apples to apples here. There we go, gigabytes. So 7.4 was our fastest write. Fastest write over here is like 5.9 something. 6.9, 6.4. So yeah, um, similar results on both. They're both, I mean, it's, it's just fast. All right, so this got a little bit hot, up to 86 degrees. That's, in my opinion, too hot, but it's in spec. It's not super alarming. If this had onboard RAM, then it would probably be throttling because that shouldn't be as hot as this. It's it's okay. As long as you're only bursting up to that sometimes and you're not like letting this sustain, it shouldn't shorten the life of your drive. Now, I will say that I did test this in a very small mini PC, so that maybe that's why it was a little bit warmer. I noticed online some of the people who were reviewing this are saying that theirs got to the high 70s, 78, 76, somewhere in that range. So this one got hotter than some of the review stuff that I've been reading. If you go down here and read some of the reviews, even on Amazon, they'll tell you like how hot it got. Let's see here if we can find one. All right, they said it spiked at 72 degrees, settled in the 60s. So you can see this is, mine is running hotter than those. And so maybe it's the case that I put it in. I also reseeded the heatsink that comes on here. And that brings me to my next point. It does have a new innovative heat sink so you just sort of smack the thing on top and then put it together like a sandwich it doesn't require any rubber bands or anything to squeeze it and i'm not sure if this is working as well as some of the other heat sinks that i've seen because in my system it was running hotter than i would expect again it's within spec i even emailed them and they said this is within spec and it's fine and they didn't throttle it because it can do this yeah that's what we're going to leave it it's it ran a little bit hot in my system other people are saying it ran cooler. If I put it into a different system, maybe it would run cooler because the little mini PC that I was using it in doesn't have a lot of room for airflow. So you probably do need some airflow around this. I wouldn't mount it directly under a GPU unless you're putting a different heatsink on there, like a bigger heatsink, maybe a plate like you have on the motherboards and stuff. That's probably gonna be all right. So yeah, it's extremely fast, but it does get warm. It's got some industrial features, but it's not SLC, but it's not a billion dollars either. All right, so that's where we're gonna leave it with this Oracle IG740 Pro. I will try this eventually in another drive. I just don't have a machine free, but I should in a couple weeks. So maybe I'll put it in there, install an operating system or something and see how warm it gets in that case and you know, not use it in a tiny little mini PC that doesn't have a lot of cooling. So yeah, I wanna remind everybody we've got our mice on sale for half price right now on epicpants.com. The coupon code is happy mice. So head on over to epicpants.com. I'm also, I've only got one of these left. And I will be putting this on sale very soon too, but yeah, that's it. These things are premium. And then I've got a bunch of t-shirts. Some of these are on sale as well. So head over to epicpants.com and I'll see you in the comments.